Hi, for this video what we have is a fitness magazine claims that the mean cost of a Zumba class is less than $12. A random sample of 40 Zumba classes has a mean cost of $11.25 and a standard deviation of $250. And we are looking to see do we have enough evidence to support the claim that the mean cost is less than $12 at a 5% significance level. So this tells me right here that we are running a hypothesis test. Um, since it's a hypothesis test for the mean, there's two options. We can either use the Z test or the T test. Um, the T test we use if we know the sample standard deviation and the Z test we use if we have the population standard deviation. So as we're reading through this, all of the information after here describes the sample. So it's saying that the sample mean cost is 11.25, which would give us X bar, and it's telling us that the sample standard deviation is 250. So since S is known, and you've got to know the difference in stats, the difference between S and sigma, because they are, even though they both represent standard deviation, they use different formulas and they mean different things. So since S is known, this points towards using a t-test for the mean. Most of the time when we're doing a test for the mean, we use a t-test because most of the time we only know the sample standard deviation and we don't know the population standard deviation. If you knew the population standard deviation, then you would run a z-test. But since we have a sample standard deviation, this right here is our S value. Um, S is 250. That tells us that we're going to use a t-test. Remember, in order to use this, you have to have a random sample, which we do. So we have a random sample. And we have to have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30, or it has to be normally distributed. But this one is met since n equals 40. Um, these are known as the assumptions and conditions. Check your textbook to see if they are different. These are the ones that are listed in the textbook that I currently teach from, but I know that there are alternative conditions or different ones listed in different texts. So we're going to use the t-test for this one. In order to use the t-test, the first thing that we, or any of the hypothesis tests really, what we start with is our null and our alternative hypothesis. Remember that the null hypothesis must always contain um, the null hypothesis must always contain equality. The alternative must always contain inequality. So since our claim is that the value is less than 12, that tells us that this is a claim about the alternative because is less than does not include it. So we would say that mu is less than 12. So the opposite of that is mu is greater than or equal to 12. The textbook that I currently teach from uses this notation. I know that there are some texts that just allow you to put equals here. Um, that is also acceptable. As long as you have equality in the null hypothesis, that is what is important. Okay, so to run the t-test, our standardized test statistic, um, that we use, we need to know our X bar, so we need to go through and find our sample mean. So a random sample of 40 has a mean cost of 11.25. We need to know our sample standard deviation, which we already found was 250. And that should be $2.50. I typoed when I... That's going to throw everything off. So S should be $2.50. Um, the sample size is 40. Mu is always what is listed here. And we need to know the degrees of freedom if you are using a table. Um, for this one, I'm not going to use a table. I'm just going to use the TI-84 graphing calculator to help us find the p-value. Um, if you are using... The table, I advise not using p-values because you have to say that it's in between two things and it's not very accurate. It would be better to use a rejection region, which I will address in another video. So for this one, the degrees of freedom, remember, is n minus 1. So the degrees of freedom would be 39. So if you were using a table, you need to know that. Um, the calculator, you don't have to know that, but it is important to 
uh, write that down. So in order to calculate the standardized test statistic, we would use t equals x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of our sample size. So we would just plug in all of our values. x bar is 1125. Mu is 12. s is $2.50 divided by the square root of 40. And for this, I, the reason that I'm writing this down is because um, I know that there it's an expectation for a lot of professors or if you're in a statistics class to write this out. Um, if you're running this in the real world, most of the time we don't write all of this information. We just use technology to find this. But this is the formula that your calculator is using to calculate. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our calculator. Um, when I use the calculator, the calculator will give me the test statistic value or the standardized test statistic value it will also give me the p value which is the probability of getting this based on this distribution um, so to get there what we do is we go to stat and tests and this one is called the t-test you have to know the name of the test in order to use this and for this one we know stats um, we don't know the data, so we're going to just plug in all of our information. Remember that mu naught is always whatever is in your null hypothesis, so 12 was in our null hypothesis. 1125 is what we had in our, as our sample mean. The sample standard deviation is $2.50. The sample size is 40. And the tail is determined by the alternative hypothesis. So whatever is in your alternative hypothesis is what you would choose. So since we had is less than, we would choose this one. And I'm going to go ahead and draw it if you want. If you have the color calculator, um, you can change. Um, you can change your values. It's just not letting me. So we can change it to red. And then if we go down to draw I'm gonna draw it out that way I know what my model should look like so when I'm drawing my model out it will show me what my standardized test statistic is it will show me where to shade and it will shade the p-value for me for the t it does take a little bit longer than the normal distribution does mainly because with t they has to deal with the degrees of freedom so it just takes a little bit longer to run it in your graphing calculator so when this is done, sorry that it is taking so long, it's just something that I've found that the t-distribution always takes longer to draw out the model than the normal distribution does. Okay, and at the bottom, it's going to give us our t is our standardized test statistic, the negative 1.8974 and p.0326. That is our p-value. So when I write this down, this value right here was found to be negative 1.8974. So this is the z-score or the t-score that corresponds to um, this mean in the t-distribution. If we draw out our picture, remember that it is always important to include a model. So if you draw out your picture, we would center this at zero. And then we would use our t-statistic, the negative 1.89 is down here. Okay, and what this represents is our p-value. So this is our probability or the area under the curve that falls below this. Um, so our p-value for this was 0 0.0396. This is really, if we wanted to write it in terms of this, this is the probability of getting x-bar that we got um, of it being less than 1125 or more extreme based on this t-distribution. So the p-value is what we use to determine. Um, it is one of the two methods of determining whether to reject or fail to reject. So I'm going to um, look at the p-value, and I'm going to compare it to my alpha level. So if we go back up to the top, um, our alpha level is 0 0.05. 
So we're going to compare 0.05 to 0.0396. If your p-value is less than, so the way that you make your decision, if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, you reject h sub 0. If the p-value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject. So those are the two conclusions um, that you would make is you either fail to reject or you reject. Um, so this is the decision rules based on p-values. So with this one, if we look at this 0 0.0396, our p-value is less than or equal to our alpha of 0 0.05. So since p is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so essentially what we're saying is that the evidence po points towards the claim being true based on a significance level of 0 0.05. If we had a significance level of 0 0.01, our decision would change. So um, knowing the alpha value or the significance level beforehand is very important. And then after you make your conclusion of whether you reject or you fail to reject, you always want to go back and talk about it in context. Remember that we're talking about the fitness magazine claim um, that the mean cost of a Zumba class is less than $12. So we can come down here and write. We always include the significance level. So I'm going to say at 5%. Um, you could also say at alpha equals 0 0.05, just some reference to the significance level, whether it's a percentage or alpha, it's fine. Um, we can say that we have enough evidence and since we our claim was about the alternative so we're rejecting this which leads towards this being true we can say that we have enough evidence to support our claim or to support the magazine's claim that a, the mean cost of a Zumba class is less than $12. So we have enough evidence to support this claim. Um, the hypothesis testing is a long process, but once you get used to it, it's not that bad. You always check conditions, null and alternative, run the test statistic for, or the standardized test statistic for your test, um, draw a picture, um, either use p-values or rejection regions to come to your conclusion, and then rewrite your conclusion in context. As always, thanks for watching.